Hi everyone, it's Astro. Today I'll show you how to set up Windows 11 for gaming from scratch. This guide is suitable for users of absolutely any level, so just follow the steps shown in the video to achieve similar results. First, to work effectively with the operating system, you'll need to download our pack with all the settings and necessary programs we'll need in the process. The link, of course, will be in the description. Guys, I would also like to remind you that we provide computer optimization service. We work with players such as Monacy. Additionally, here's a list of other well-known pro players from our portfolio. So if if you're tired of endless problems with your computer such as low FPS, high input lag and you feel that something is definitely wrong with your game, you can just create a ticket in our Discord or DM me on Twitter. You'll get a perfectly tuned system for your specific tasks and save yourself a lot of headache. All the links, of course, will be in the description. After downloading, unpack the archive and copy the folder to your desktop. Next, you'll need to go into the control panel. To do this, press the Windows plus R key combination and type control. Then go to mouse settings and in the pointer options section, uncheck the box for Windows acceleration. I think there's no need to explain why mouse acceleration is destructive for any competitive shooter player. So if you're using it, then just forget the term muscle memory exists. In the power options, you need to set the ultimate performance power plan. This is the best uh, power plan for from Microsoft itself, already pre-installed in some editions of Windows. So to make it appear for you, you need to enter this command in the CMD like shown. Also, go into power scheme settings and set never here so that your display doesn't turn off when you're just sitting AFK. Next, I do not recommend touching the chipset drivers because I personally haven't seen any evidence of any positive impact from their installation. So the only exception to this rule is AMD CPUs with the 3DV cache technology. As for installing the driver for your GPU, it happens automatically. However, the Windows Update Center doesn't always install a correctly working version. So to avoid any potential compatibility problems, I recommend installing the driver that we install for all our customers. First, you'll need to download the driver from the NVIDIA website. You already know where to find the link. All you need to do is open it and click download. Next, you'll need to remove the current driver using a third-party software called uh, Display Driver Uninstaller. This step will eliminate all potential issues your current driver might have, so you can start with a clean slate. Before proceeding, make sure you check this box to prevent uh, Windows from automatically installing the driver again. To initiate the process, just follow the instructions shown on the screen. After successfully removing the old version, you can verify that it is indeed removed. To do this, right-click on an empty space on your desktop and make sure that the NVIDIA panel has disappeared. Now you'll need to install the new driver, which you already downloaded. So if you wish, you can do this via NVIDIA Slimmer or NVClean install, but in practice, I haven't seen any significant benefits from this additional step. So just save yourself a hustle and follow my steps. After successfully installing the driver, we can proceed to the NVIDIA control panel settings. Here everything is quite simple, but I very often see people making mistakes at this stage. Initially, you'll need to go to change resolution tab, then set the maximum available resolution and also the maximum available refresh rate so that we have smooth and responsive image. After that, go to adjust desktop size and position to adjust the scaling process. If you play native resolution, then leave it at aspect ratio. If you prefer a stretched 4x3 resolution, then set it to full screen. In addition, you'll need to choose the scaling method. Scaling or in other words, stretching of the image can be performed by the display or the GPU. For most of you, a safe option will be GPU because modern graphics cards handle scaling relatively well and this particularly doesn't create any additional latency. However, some uh, displays have very good built-in scaling modules, so-called scalers, and uh, they can perform scaling even faster than GPUs. On your screen, you can see a small list of displays that fit this description. So if you have one of these, feel free to try this scaling first. Also do not forget to check uh, the box here to force the scaling method for all applications and programs. After that go to manage 3D settings. Tweaking every setting in this section is a very good idea. It's uh, best to set a pre-prepared performance preset from Nvidia themselves in the tab above. It will change all the settings that impact performance from the 3D parameters menu to the best values and you won't have to change them manually. To do this uh, simply move this slider to the performance value and that's pretty much it. The 
only setting that's actually still worth changing is power management mode. Set it to prefer maximum performance so that your graphics card doesn't go into so-called power saving mode in CPU bound scenarios. Also, I'm well aware that many of you are very accustomed to the Windows 10 interface and you can make Windows 11 look more familiar through some uh, cosmetic changes. To make those changes, all you have to do is to follow the actions on your screen. Now our taskbar looks more convenient and complementary to our tasks. Next we can go to the Windows settings menu, you need to click start, go to settings, make sure you have a local account first, meaning you're not logged into a Microsoft account and you don't have any various unnecessary synchronizations, otherwise just log out of it if you can. Next it is worth uh, checking the Windows Update Center, if uh, Windows doesn't let you pause updates and the button is grayed out then first download all the necessary updates and uh, after that uh, feel free to pause them. This is necessary so that updates do not interfere with our gaming process and something doesn't randomly start downloading during our game session. Also, an important note for those who play Face It. The Face It anti-cheat is heavily dependent on various Windows security patches, so if you get an error while opening it, I recommend first updating Windows and only then uh, pausing your updates. I also do recommend setting a dark theme for convenience and eye comfort. To do this, go to personalization, then colors, set dark instead of light, and you can also also turn off the transparency effect because various effects in Windows can reduce performance especially on weaker configurations. Next you'll need to go to gaming section, first turn off the Xbox game bar, it actually forces a so-called overlay that works on top of your game and can consume additional performance and create extra latency. An important note, uh, specifically on Windows 11 it is not enough to just turn it off in the Windows settings, so to turn it off completely you'll need to edit the global parameter in the registry. To do this just follow my steps. After this you can immediately go to graphics section, there's also a couple of interesting points here. So first go to change default graphics settings. If you were on Windows 10 you know perfectly well that the slider is usually turned off because it worked worse on the Windows 10 than on Windows 11. Now it's enabled by default and uh, I personally had a bad experience with the setting because when enabled it could uh, significantly ruin your frame times on some configurations and some games. So I recommend initially testing the default option and if you have any problems stutters or lags and yes you can turn it off and restart your computer and after that just uh, test the results. The last uh, thing in this section that is worth discussing is the game mode. I highly do not recommend turning it off because essentially it gives any 3D application exclusive priority meaning that all the resources of your computer go to rendering or any other tasks performed within the 3D application. The last thing to touch on is uh, Windows background applications. On uh, Windows 10 this uh, could be easily turned turned off in the privacy settings. On Windows 11 this option isn't available, so to get access to this and prevent Windows from running applications in the background you'll need to go to the group policy editor and uh, change one parameter like shown. Guys, I highly recommend you resolve the issue with Windows activation, because if you do not, a Windows activation watermark will appear at the bottom right, which will consume additional resources of your computer, because it works on top of your game, just like overlay, and it can potentially create additional latency for your system. I won't give recommendations on how to solve this issue, to avoid uh, taking extra responsibility, I'll just say that we have an interesting program in the Astro Crew folder, and strictly for informative purposes, I'll show how it works. What you do with this information is obviously up to you.
Next, it is worth uh, moving on to managing startup programs. That is removing unnecessary programs that launch when your system starts. Yes, uh, this can be done via the task manager, but it is easier to do it through the third party software because it allows us to access more stuff. Just follow the actions on the screen and you'll get an excellent result where your system will start up faster and fewer resources will be spent on background applications. Also, make sure you have the so-called MSI mode set. Essentially, your driver has two modes of operation, the usual one and a faster one. So to force the faster mode, you'll need to run the MSI mode program as an admin and check the box in front of your GPU, then click apply and restart your system. Also, to not limit your graphics card in any way possible, it would be a good idea to disable various types of uh, hardware acceleration in your browser and Discord. So to do this, uh, first go to Discord settings and enter the advanced menu. You have to disable uh, hardware acceleration and also disable overlay. After this you'll need to restart the application. When it comes to browser almost all of them have a similar setting responsible for hardware acceleration as I said. Disable it and also disable browser background services like shown so that various background applications aren't running. This will additionally reduce the load on your GPU and may even slightly increase your FPS. Now, uh, let's move on to the most important graphics card settings, which in my opinion everyone should have. To set them, you'll need to go to the GPU stuff folder and find the NVIDIA Profile Inspector. The software is already pre-installed and will allow us to get access to the extended driver settings menu. Here you need to find just one setting called CUDA Force P2 State. Essentially, this is an energy saving function that can significantly limit your GPU potential. By disabling it, your card will boost much better, you'll get more stability, and in some cases it can even improve performance. After setting this option, all you need to do is to click apply changes and exit. For the next set of settings, we'll need a program called MSI Afterburner. You already have an installation package in the Astro Crew folder, so make sure to use it. After you're done, just open it and set the power limits to maximum values so that your GPU isn't limited by anything energy-wise. Next, go into the settings and check these boxes to unlock uh, stable voltage control, voltage monitoring and so on. This will help your GPU work more stably and again boost to the necessary frequencies. Another important step you'll need to do is to memorize your GPU model. Then go to your browser, type in the model and add tech power up at the end to look up the official frequencies for your GPU. In my case, you can see that it is 2475 MHz. So again, memorize it, go back to MS After Burner, press Ctrl plus F to open the frequency graph and find the needed number. Once you found the corresponding point, press Ctrl plus L so that the graph lights up and the value is locked. After that, close the graph, click apply on the checkbox and also click on the Windows button so that the settings are applied on the startup without the need to run MS Afterburner again. Last but not least, you need to enable the so-called K-Boost. The only problem is that in a default skin of MS Afterburner, the setting isn't available. So to access it, you'll need to install an old skin of this program. You can install the skin using the folder available in our Discord. The link to the Discord will be in the description. You need to go to our Discord, navigate to Twix channel and find the archive there. After that, download it, unpack it on the desktop and you'll have uh, the same folder as mine. All you need to do in this folder is to copy the default X file into the skins folder, provided that you obviously already installed MS Afterburner itself. And uh, after that, just restart the program. Once you open it, you can go back into the settings, go to user interface and find the required skin. If everything is correctly installed, select the skin, click apply, then OK. Now you have the new skin. All you have to do is click on K boost here, select no when prompted. After that, uh, restart the computer and your setting will come into effect and work correctly as expected. That's pretty much it. If you have any additional questions, you can ask them in the comments. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next one.